the last man on earth was sitting in his room and suddenly he heard his door knock. Ajay was in utter elation on finishing his latest sci-fi. His stop had come. He stepped out of his bus and took a deep breath in and allowed himself to be overcome by the deep sense of gratification he had on finishing his sci-fi. He couldn't fail to notice the amazing weather. The green purple trees standing in a straight line along the promenade, swaying gently against the salty sea breeze. His attention was distracted by a dog as quick as a bullet, running towards a colony of seemingly confused seagulls. So he walked up towards his doorstep, stopped, turned around, and looked at all his eyes could see. You see, Ajay was a scientist in the field of genetics, and he was working on his own theory of evolution. He knew he was at the cusp of discovery, but when, when he asked himself, how long will this take? Ajay, he heard his ever enigmatic grandfather scream. Your grandmother has made your favorite dosas and chutneys. Come up at once, else they will get cold. Ajay bolted upstairs and just slid into the dining chair. I know, I know, you'll come running like this only for that dosa or for that seema. You are to get married to that girl in a few months and you ought to put on some weight. He noticed Ajay was feeling a little low today and decided to tell him a story. A story about Lord Vishnu's ten incarnations. A story about evolution. The story of the Shavatar. Matsya, he began. The fish was the Lord's first incarnation. Followed by Kurma, the turtle, was the next incarnation. And then came Varaha, the terrestrial four-legged animals. And then came Narasimha, the half-man, half-lion beast. Followed by Vamana, the dwarf. And then came Parashurama, Rama with an axe. And finally, Rama, the prince and the king. And then Krishna came, the teacher and the philosopher. And then came Buddha, the spiritual master. And finally will come Kalki, he said. Tata, I don't want to hear that story again. I've heard it a hundred times and I'm in no mood to hear this from you again. Yes, indeed, Ajay. But you've not heard it from this point of view. Now listen to it. Ajay let his grandfather have his way. He was getting old and he just wanted to keep him happy. Matsya, his grandfather continued. The fish, symbolizing life, began in water. Ajay's mind got distracted to the fish tank in his house. Seema had gifted it to him with two tiny, tiny goldfish on his successful PhD defense. And he wondered, did all of us just evolve from that, that tiny little creature 400 million years ago? It's a long time, he thought to himself. Kurma, his grandfather continued, the tortoise, signifying the evolution of animals from water to land. And Ajay's mind now again went to the Galapagos Islands where he's seen the tortoise up close. They were huge beasts. They weighed 500 pounds, heavier than the biggest sumo wrestlers, easily overweighing them by 150 pounds. He zoned out once again, and his mind drifted towards the contemporary koi pond at his favorite Chinese restaurant. The new owners had added a few turtles to their already extravagant and plush setup. Ajay, his grandfather screamed, don't zone out like this. I'm telling you a story, it's important. You will miss the most important part. Yes, Tata, please continue, Ajay said. Next came Varaha, the whore, 
or the pig, the first of the four-legged animals, signifying the evolution of amphibians to completely to land. And next came Narasimha, a half-man, half-lion beast, signifying the evolution of beasts to sapiens, to man. Now, Ajay's grandfather went on to explain each of these incarnations in detail, and Ajay's scientific mind started grasping the connection and he started connecting the dots between these incarnations. Parashurama, his grandfather roared, he was the first cave man, the man who lived in forests and jungles and caves. He wore thick, fat animal hide and had big, fat clubs resting on his broad shoulders and walked around in his usual baritone self, yelling at people at his own whim. Ajay could only think of the cartoon, The Flintstones, and he could almost imagine Fred Flintstone yelling for his wife, Wilma, in his baritone voice. And then he wondered, I'm pretty sure that's not how cavemen really behave. And then came Rama. His grandfather said ever so proudly, the prince who then became the king. Now society had evolved once again. There was law and order. And Rama was the modern man, a man who could live in his present, learn from his past, and yet plan for the future. Here, take another dosa. You're not eating only. You're going to become thin. I don't know what that Seema is going to tell me. She must think they're awful grandparents. Tata, please, the story. Ajay interjected immediately. He didn't want his grandfather to go on. Otherwise, he would have just started talking about how thin Ajay was and how much weight he had to put on. Yes, Ajay, yes, I know. And then came Krishna, he continued. The teacher and the philosopher. Society had evolved once again and man became shrewd. He started living for himself. There was war between men, but there was also love and compassion. And again, Ajay zoomed out and thought about the current worldly scenarios and thought to himself, is this how we currently are right now? We say we love one another. We say we want to live with each other. But then behind our backs, we start fighting. Is this how we are? He thought to himself. And then came Buddha, his grandfather continued, the true spiritual master, the first one to attain enlightenment. Ajay's mind now just drifted towards the Shaolin monks. They were his favorite. Ever since he was a child, he just wanted to be a monk, a Shaolin monk in particular, because he wanted to learn Kung Fu the way they practiced, but only because he wanted to please the girls in the school. But as he grew up, he learned, he knew the amount of determination and courage and self-sacrifice it took to become a Shaolin monk. They were truly people who attained happiness by giving up every materialistic pleasures. They attained happiness by whatever they have. And then will come Kalki, his grandfather continued. He is believed to be a techno-humanoid, a half-man, half-robot. His grandfather roared once again with that baritone voice of his. Ajay's phone rang. He took it up and he silenced the call, but he couldn't fail to notice the Arnold Schwarzenegger wallpaper. <laughs> the Terminator who comes back from the future to the present to protect man once again. So Ajay, do you see the connection between these incarnations? At this point, Ajay was flabbergasted. He had no words. Tata, how do you know all this? This is exactly how Charles Darwin had discovered. From the very first fish, life began in water. Then life moved on to the amphibians, signifying a tortoise. And then to the four-legged animals, terrestrial animals. And finally to the men we are. How did you know all this? He asked his grandfather. His grandfather chuckled and said, <laughs> Ajay, it's quite simple. My grandfather before me told me this story. But Ajay, on a more serious note, the answer to all the questions you have, 
lie within you. In times of doubt, just take a deep breath in and believe in yourself. And then you truly can accomplish anything.